Hello guys and welcome back and it has definitely been a while since I've been able to uh, shoot a video. I've been extremely busy with work so it's been hard to get in here and actually work on the Alvaville Railroad. But uh, well as you can see I've got probably 98% of all the track laid. Uh, everything's uh, glued and uh, glued down with the latex adhesive and uh, all the turnouts are installed. Uh, I still have a little bit more to do down here and I uh, waited to install this just simply because I have to get up on the uh, on the tabletop in order to uh, lay the ballast down so I wanted to hold off on the, the area where the sack's at. Uh, plus I still need to uh, install the, the turntable for the locomotive there. I don't know if you can see the, the circle I've got drawn in there amongst the mess. But, uh, but yeah, everything went in well, and uh, I'm to the point now where I'm, I'm getting ready to start the wiring uh, for the track. And uh, what I did uh, before I actually got in there and started uh, installing the, the feeder wires and the bus line and all that, I, as you can see here, I've kind of started on my, uh, on my control panel. And um, as you can see here, what I've got is... Uh, I've got this, let me show you guys how I did this. Uh, I don't have the bottom part uh, uh, glued down yet, but as you can see, I built this frame out of one by threes. And uh, it's actually attached to the twin bracket arm up underneath there, you could probably see that. So it's really just basically a frame. And uh, I took some MDF board and cut it out at the, uh, the angle pitch if you will of what I wanted the control panel to be and so uh, uh, I've cut out three pieces and just glued just glued it down with the uh, uh, Elmer's wood glue uh, all this is going to get painted uh, probably a I don't know a, a dark gray color I'm thinking I might go with the hunter green I don't know I'm still still uh, debating on that but but as you can see here, I've also started the actual, the actual panel itself, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to see if it'll stay up there. No, well the the, uh, the plexiglass won't stay up there, but we can go ahead and look at it from this this perspective here. As you can see, I've got all my blocks color coded, and then I have a a legend over here that shows uh, what block is what and then in here I've got uh, these toggle switches here you know they'll be installed here and then right here is where the slide switch goes which will enable me to uh, change the direction of the locomotive it just fits down in a slot like that I don't know I still might paint these black I don't really like that that chrome look but um, so and then down here I've uh, uh, purchased some uh, some little momentary switches little toggle switches for the turnouts themselves and uh, so I don't burn the turnouts and if you, if you don't know what a momentary switch is basically it's a it's an on off on position toggle switch well in this case a toggle switch but every time you push it up it pops back down to that off position which is the middle position same thing if you put, pull it down it just it kicks back up to the middle position uh, because with these atlas uh, under the table switches uh, if you continuously send them a, a direct current uh, it'll burn the switch out so um, the switch machine out so that's why I decided to go with the momentary switches now the only downside to using the momentary switches, uh, which really you have to do anyway, uh, is if you're going to use LED lights, which is what I'm going to do for the for the uh, to denote the uh, the main route or the diverging route, uh, which way the switch is thrown. So I've still got to come back and drill holes for those. Uh, but the way that I'm able to get around uh, the issue of uh, uh, 
using the momentary switch. So, well, let me back a sec. What happens is when you use the momentary switch, you know, if you push the switch up, the LED light kicks in, which is exactly what you want. But when it pops back down to the off position, the circuit's broke, and so the, the LED light doesn't stay on. So the way you get around that is you have to uh, uh, install the, the, well, in my case, if you're using the Atlas under the table switches, you have to install these uh, snap relays here. And uh, I'll get into a video uh, of how to use these. Um, I bought a, a handful of these off of eBay for pretty cheap, actually. So I'll show you how to wire those up with the LEDs. And, and I'm going to go into a more detailed video of you know how I'm doing the wiring and everything. I just wanted to kind of bring uh, everybody up to date as where I'm at exactly on the layout. So. Uh, but this right here, the panel, obviously, it's going to have uh, the plexiglass on top. Uh, but I've bought these little hinges here. And it'll be, you'll be able to open it from this direction like this. I don't know if I can do this with the camera, but you'll be able to open it like this to access the, uh, the switches themselves. And, uh, and then I bought some magnets to, I'm going to install, just kind of glue to the top just to keep the, the control panel, uh, you know, where it won't pop up or anything. So, uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at on it. And as you can see, I've already, my cutting job was not the best in the world. Um, and that's okay because the switches and the, the, the nuts that hold the switches in place and like you saw with the slide switch, it'll... It'll definitely cover up a lot of the, uh, the uneven cuts, which I had to do with a um, jigsaw, by the way, which was very difficult to do. Um, the thing I did here is uh, I took a fourth inch hardboard. Let's see if I can pull this up. Get it from the side view. So I took a fourth inch, one fourth inch uh, piece of hardboard and cut it out to approximately one by two. Now, if you remember correctly, I had a, a lot of my design work in AutoCAD, so what I was able to do was uh, uh, use my CAD program to create both of these diagrams and uh, to even create this right here as well as this. And, uh, and then I took that down to uh, uh, Staples and had them printed out for me. And then I glued dirty there I glued the the paper the print to the hardboard with this uh, Elmer's spray adhesive and it seemed to work really well it, it held the the it's holding the paper to the hardboard uh, good which is what I want and uh, and then with the hardboard or excuse me with the plexiglass I've got as you can see I'm gonna have four holes in the corners here and uh, I've got finishing washers and uh, screws that hold the plexiglass to this. So, uh, see, let me step back there. That's basically what it's going to look like. I just got to get everything wired up. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to get the control panel in place first and start thinking about this part uh, before I started wiring because I uh, started installing the feeder wires and bus the bus wire and everything just simply because I wanted to uh, uh, you know see about how much wire it's going to take and and uh, you know to start getting a feel for uh, you know where to mount my terminal strips if you remember correctly from a couple of videos back uh, you know I'm using terminal switches uh, in order to differentiate between you know cab one and cab two for the various blocks so um, so I just wanted to get an idea of how that's gonna you know gonna pan out for me so uh, I will keep you guys up to date and hopefully I'll be able to to really start uh, doing a lot more work on this and be able to get some more videos up and uh, so I appreciate you guys watching and just appreciate any comments uh, uh, that you might have to offer and you guys take care. Thanks a lot.